Very, as you know, our walk with God is something to be taken very serious, right? And we should be committed with doing so. And that is going to be our topic today. So go ahead. There's an old farmer analogy about commitment. Farming used to be a very difficult trade, and they used to have the breakfast story to describe levels of commitment, the bacon and eggs comparison. In this comparison, they tell, they say how the chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. I know that this is not very spiritual or Jewish, but it, resonate with, it resonated with me for many decades. Many times I have told people it's not your commitment that matters, but your commitment to your commitment. Everyone is committed to something, sort of. But is it real? Are you real? Then get it done. One of my favorite Bible stories on this matter happens in Egypt about 1,800 years ago. Joseph has been sold into Egypt 22 years before as a slave by his brothers. For 13 years, he's been a slave first to Potiphar and then in the prison as a slave also helping there. When Joseph explained the king's dream, Joseph was made the king's top man, collecting all the surplus grain for seven years to be sold during the famine that was to come. All was well except that the famine also reached his family back home. Joseph's brothers heard there was grain in Egypt, so Jacob's ten oldest sons went there to get grain. So far, so good. This is all part of the plan of God. Unbeknown to them, Joseph was screening all foreign buyers, knowing that his people would appear someday. Joseph was very formal to his brothers, but did not at all reveal who he was. Joseph asked about their parents and extended family. They told Joseph they still had a younger brother at home. Joseph accused them of being spies and jailed Simeon until they, for now, till they came back. He said that to prove they were honest people, they would have to bring their youngest brother on the next trip to get food. They went home really sad. Father Jacob was horrified and said, no way. The brother said it would be okay. Could you read verse 42, 37? Yeah, it says, Then Reuben said to his father, You may put both of my sons to death. If I do not bring him back to you, entrust him to my care, and I will bring him back. Reuben, the oldest, made this really stupid promise. You can kill my sons. Well, they happen to be Jacob's grandsons. That's a silly thing to say. Could you now read 43, 8 and 9? It says, then Judah said to Israel, his father, send the boy along with me and we will go at once so that we and you and our children may live and not die. I myself will guarantee his safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him here before you, I will bear the blame before you all my life. Judah, the number four son, said, I will be responsible for Joseph. And he meant it. They went back. All was well. Simeon was released and Benjamin was presented, got their grain and heading home. Now Joseph tested them. He put his royal cup into Benjamin's sack, and as they were leaving, had his guards pursue them, check the sacks, and they arrested Benjamin. They all went back to plead for their brother. Judah spoke and told the long family history of, of what happened to Joseph, uh, sorry, to hit to Joseph, and then said, "Could you read forty-four thirty to thirty-four? So now, if the boy is not with us when I go back to your servant, my father, and if my father, whose life is closely bound up with the boy's life, see that the boy isn't there, he will die. Your servants will bring the gray head of our father down to the grave in sorrow. Your servant guaranteed the boy's safety to my father." I said, if I do not bring him back to you, I will bear the blame before you, my father, all my life. Now then, please let your servant remain here as my Lord's slave in place of the boy, and let the boy return with his brothers. How can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? No, do not let me see the misery that would come on my father. When I read these verses and realize what he meant, I get all choked up. Judah begged Joseph 
to be Joseph's slave instead of his brother, Benjamin. And this is in presence of everybody, just wanting, begging, if he could just stay and let Benjamin go free. Judah offered up his life forever as a slave. Judah passed the test. From the tribe of Judah, we have King David. From the tribe of Judah, we have Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who also did lay down his life for all of us. Amen. Thanks a lot for this, Harry. Thank you.